Hello everybody. Uniquely Lady Charlotte here on Saturday. Um, I think it's May 25th. I think so. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I, I kind of haven't been keeping up with the days. But anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that um, the funeral service was beautiful. We just left there. I just dropped mom off. So now I'm headed to my apartment to just kind of, um, I don't know, just think and reflect about, you know, about my daughter, about Kristen. Um, she had a white casket and she had on a beautiful sequin dress, sparkly dress. And there was a ceremony where I stood at one end of the casket and her stepmother stood at the other end of the casket while her dad placed a crown up on her head and wrapped her up in um, a satin, a pretty satin, um, light blue coverlet. It was beautiful. So he wrapped it across like that. And her head was out and her crown was on. So it kind of looked like a, a queen's cake that he wrapped her up in. And um, people could make remarks two minute remarks my sister got up there and I'm going to tell you something about my sister Nene. she makes great remarks at funerals she comes from the heart she makes great remarks so when she stood up to give her remarks my aunt who came my aunt says now that's the one they shouldn't get a mic to she's going to talk forever I said but she has such wonderful remarks at funerals my sister got to say something to everybody at the funeral I remember she went to one funeral, wasn't even, she didn't even know who it was. She thought it was somebody else, but it wasn't them, and so she had given remarks. But anyway, they were universal remarks, so she was, it was okay. So anyway, my sister's up to giving remarks, and she said all kind of wonderful things, and then she started talking about herself, and I'm like, oh no, sound like my sister eulogizing herself. Then she got back on to my daughter. And then she started talking about some other things. And finally, I looked over at Chris's dad, a stepmom, and, <laughs> and they're looking at me talking about, I'm like, Arr. so I get up, I put my finger up, and I go up there, I walk across them, because they're sitting directly in front of the casket. I'm sitting off to the right with my family and friends. Now, I have a very small family, so... I have my family and friends and my support system over to the right. They did ask me if I wanted to sit in the middle with them. And so I'm like, no, I just want to sit here with my family and friends. So um, so I go striking across, you know, in front of the casket, in front of everybody. And I got my finger up. And my sister don't see me coming. So finally she looked up and saw me. And she's like, oh, I've been talking longer than two minutes. And I was like, so I got the mic from her. And I didn't want to just take the mic and then go sit down. So I stood up there and I said some things. And I'm going to tell you, I don't even remember what I said. It was just God speaking. I don't know what I said. But I do know one thing that I said. What my mama told me I said was that um, none of us should be crying. Because she's, she's only asleep. And that if you believe in who you believe in, if you believe in God like you say you do, then this isn't a sad occasion. It is a joyous occasion. She's gone home. No longer here, but has gone home. And that's not a reason to be sad. It's a home-going celebration. And I asked them, do you really think Kristen will really want to sit around here sad? I'm like, if any of my friends and family know me, they know I laugh a lot. If any of my, I mean, any of her dad's and stepmom's friends know them. Y'all know they laugh a lot. So Kristen was surrounded by love and lots of laughter and she had a phenomenal um, personality and always laughed. So she would not want to sit around here being sad. So then everybody was like, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm like, you know what? My daughter lived her life. She was bold. She was beautiful. She lived her life to just do whatever she wanted to do. She put on what clothes she wanted to put on. Kristen was Kristen. She was true to herself. Kristen was Kristen. So I said all those things to, to let them know, don't be sad. And I told them I'm her mother. I'm her biological mother. If I'm telling you don't be sad, believe me, it's what she wants me to tell you. So after that, 
my nephew, he got up and spoke, which was a surprise, but it was a good surprise because he's, he's not one to really get up there and speak, but he spoke. Um, my grandchildren took it well. Um, Kiana, my youngest daughter, her sister came and uh, brought her children and it was well received. They were very helpful. They went up to grab flowers. Scotty came, he, his mother and his sister, they came to try to grab flowers and try to help, but they, they had it all together. They were very helpful. I got I received cards while I was sitting there. My co-workers from um, the transit facility I work with, uh, um, about three of them came, gave me hugs. I told them to come over and sit with me in the family and friends section. Um, I just let anybody sit wherever they want to sit if they were associated with me. Um, and then... No, four, four of my friends I work with at my prison job came. And then cousins I hadn't seen in a while, they were there. Neighborhood friends I grew up with, they were there. The support was just overwhelming. It was really, really nice for them to come over and fill up my section. Because my section was looking pretty empty. But um, a good friend of mine, uh, I just had so many good friends. There's so many, just so many. One of my friends that I did hair with, she was there, and I mean, it was just, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful, and I'm so happy. I'm really, really happy. But um, so after that, um, they closed the casket after her dad wrapped her in in that satin, blue satin, and put a crown on her wrapped up in the blue satin, and then. Um, before that, I went over to the casket to to say goodbye. We'll see you later. And I tried to kiss her on the forehead, but I'm too short and my stomach too big, so I couldn't lean over there. So I got kind of over there. Then I started thinking, girl, if you lay your weight on this casket and it fall to the floor, you might well just go on the glory with her. So I kissed my hand and put it on her forehead and called her my beautiful baby. And then, um, let's see. Mona went and spoke to her. Mona fainted a little bit. Her stepmom, she fainted a little bit. And her dad held it together. He was strong. He had, we were all strong, but he held it together. And uh, some of her cousins on their side got up and spoke. And um, it was nice. It was really nice. So then we went to the funeral, I mean to the grave site where my grandmother and grandfather are buried. That was also a plus for me. I felt like it was a plus for me because she's where my grandmother and grandfather are that raised me. It gives you somewhat a little bit more comfort. I mean, I know everybody's going to glory and everything, but it gave me a little comfort just knowing she's there with them. And then, um, oh, oh, and then um, they had the arrangements made. Her, her dad and his her aunt made the funeral arrangements. So then once we got to the grave site, um, they had a horse-drawn carriage waiting for her. Um, a clear horse-drawn carriage with Clydesdales. And they put her casket inside the, the carriage, and then they had the carriage take her to her grave site. And then they, um, they positioned her. It was all white casket, like I said, with blue satin interior. And... Um, they said, they thanked everybody, you know, from the family. I sat in the front row with her mom and stepdad and her brothers up there. My girls sat behind me and my grandbaby. And then I sat in the front row. They had on all white, but I got on this yellow top and a pair of black pants. We didn't get the text um, about them wearing all white and to wear all white. So my family and I, we wore all kind of colors. But, um, but it was beautiful still. And then, um, then he said the, 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 um, he prayed, he prayed for everybody. And then, um, they had a, a professional photographer out there. So they took lots of pictures of, of everybody, um, that wanted to take pictures. Her stepmom asked me if I wanted to take pictures, but I didn't want to take pictures at first. And she was just looking at me like, Kim, please. And so... And then my oldest daughter's like, Mom, take some pictures. I'm going to take pictures with my phone. You can take some pictures. You know, you need to take some pictures. So 
So I talked to her dad and I asked, could I, could I take some pictures, you know, so, and he was like, sure, of course, you're a mama. So I got some pictures taken. Like I said, Scotty was there, his mom was there, his sister was there. So Scotty's mother took some pictures and then she wanted to take pictures of me in Kristen's casket. Then she got me and Scotty together to take pictures with, with the casket and pictures. I mean, there were so many pictures. And then, oh, my um, my first son-in-law, he was there. Um, he bought my grandson, so he was there, dressed up and everything, because he knew Kristen. And then, let's see, who else was there? Oh, Kristen had some of her, her co-workers from Amazon come out, and she had started a girls' group, and, you know, a social group, so they came out. And the obituary was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. It showcased a whole bunch of pictures of her growing up, of course, you know how they do that. So it was absolutely beautiful. Um, just really, really nice. It was a nice turnout. Nice turnout. So after that, they went over to the venue so they could um, have the repast or the celebration of life. I didn't go to that. I bought Mama home and Mama wanted to go out to eat, but I'm, I'm not hungry, really. I don't want to eat. And so, um, took mama home so now I'm getting ready to go to my apartment and I'm gonna go clean up um I may take a few moments to rest because I've been really busy with taking care of Kiana since she had her knee, knee surgery and um I want to say thank you to all the CNAs that wipe butt that massage feet put lotions on feet change pads thank y'all so much the nurses the CNAs that all to do all that type of personal care stuff I want to say thank you thank you your job is tough so um now I got to think on the next steps the next steps are I got to go to my 401k I think it'll be I think I can't get the money until after I, I get the death certificate so then or maybe the obituary I have to call them on Tuesday to see what I have to do um, her dad put in a certain amount of money toward everything, and he told me how much that was. So I'm trying to match half. So I need to I need to get seven thousand dollars so I can pay for half the funeral, and then um, hopefully I got that much in my 401k. But he said if I don't have that, you know, just get whatever I can, which is which is beyond what I expected because I'm a mother. You know, and I think it's only right that I pay half the expenses. But as he said, this was unexpected. But it all work out. God work it out. He always does. So I'm gonna see what I need to do Monday and see if I got enough to to get some out of there. Because I've had a couple of hardship withdrawals. Well, one hardship withdrawal, and I'm still paying that back. So I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. Um, so anyway. But she was beautiful. She had on blue eyeshadow. And I think that was to match the inside of her, her um, casket. And other than that, my kids, Kiana and Candace, and the rest of my family, my sisters, um, cousins, um, they're over. They're over at the repass. And so they text me, you know, ask me how I was doing. And I'm fine. I'm really fine. I really am. I really am. Because I know who I serve, and I know she's in a better place than here. There's no heartbreak up there. There's no sickness up there. There's no trauma up there. There are no missing limbs up there. Cancer isn't there. COVID isn't there. High blood pressure isn't there. Blindness isn't there. Congenial birth defects aren't there. Spina bifida isn't there. Leukemia isn't there. So I know where my daughter is. Because I believe the way I do. Now, am I going to cry later? Possibly. Because I'm going to miss my little baby. I see her as my little baby. That little 9 pound, 8 ounce baby that I bought into the world. She'll always be my baby. She'll be okay. I know she'll be okay. I'll be okay. We'll be okay. It's just a natural process of things, you know. But as far as being sad, I'm not sad. Um, we've had the final step today. So now it's time to to um, 
to keep on living. Keep on living. Do our best. Love each other. Stay away from grudges. Don't hold grudges against people. Because you never know when your number's up. You never know. And you don't want to... I wouldn't want to go see God with that on my heart that I got a grudge against somebody or pass away and go into glory and somebody's carrying that guilt of a grudge. I wouldn't want anybody to carry that. So y'all better start forgiving people. Better start forgiving people. Learn to say I'm sorry. Learn to tell people you appreciate them. Learn, learn to tell people I love you. That doesn't make you weak. To tell somebody you love them. And when you look at people, look them in their eyes and talk to them. Look them in the eyes when they talk to them. When you talk to people. That means a whole lot more. Than just empty words coming out your mouth. But anyway, I'm not going to bore y'all with all that. So... Today was a good day. It was supposed to rain and thunderstorm, but God held it off. It's beautiful out here. The storm is coming in, though I can tell it's coming in, but God held it off. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to go. Thank y'all for being so supportive. I've received so many comments and so many um, comments of things that happened to people and they're still grieving. I just want you to know that you can always leave your comments on my channel even after I close this chapter you can always leave your comments under that because um, I think everybody needs to read it everybody needs to read those comments people are pouring their hearts out people have their own trauma use this to pour out your trauma talk about it talk about it and let's, let's get through it let's get through it together okay so continue to use that story, for those of you that don't know, I had three stories, well, three videos. This is the fourth video um, of the series about my daughter um, transitioning and going on to glory. You know, um, I want to say this. All of this happened, she said, because she had got the gastric bypass and didn't follow protocol like she should have all the way. So before you get that surgery, if you feel like you need it, I'm not going to tell you you don't need it and you shouldn't get it. I'm not going to do that. But make sure you think about it from beginning to end. Make sure you understand that it's a lifestyle change. Oh, that's a pretty table on the side of the road. But I ain't going to mess with it. I might have big boobs. Anyway, okay, y'all know how I get Um, Make sure you think about it, the process from beginning to end. Make sure you understand the financial obligation as far as the continued nutrients that you're going to have to purchase. How you're going to have to change your, your living, the way you live. How you're going to have to exercise. How, all the things that you need to do. Maybe the increased doctor visits. You think about that before you go through with any major surgery, internal surgery. That's going to alter who you are. You put all those things into place. You just can't have the surgery and think, oh well, I'm done with that. I've lost my weight. I'm done with that. No, there's a maintenance regimen for the rest of your life. And if you don't abide by it, you're going to hurt yourself. And if not, you know, cause, you know, cause yourself to, you know, to experience something worse. So, I just want to say that to you guys. Okay, well, I'm going to go and um, lay down, watch TV for a little bit. And then, um, then I'll start cleaning up, you know, thinking and cleaning up, thinking and cleaning up. Oh, and I got a, I got some picture frames, and I got lots of pictures of her. So I want to make a, um, a collage of her photos and put them in a picture frame. So I'll, I'll probably work on that on Monday because I'm just really tired today. It was a lot, a lot. Then I got to deal with Kiana when she, when her sister brings her back to the house tonight. So and then her dad's gonna come pick her up Monday night, I think he said. So. Alrighty, so I'm going to go. But again, thank y'all for being there for me. I appreciate it. And remember, I'm there for you. Okay? I love you guys. And I'll be talking to you soon. Bye.